Welcome to Wild Animal Wednesday. I'm Mrs. Laura. And I'm Alexis. And today we're going to learn about newts. Now newts will live in some part of North America and a little part of Asia, but they mostly live in Europe. And today we're going to feature the largest newt in Europe, which is the... Great Crested Newt! Amphibian, baby amphibian, you hatch out of an egg. You're a larva now with your swishy tail. You were born with gills. And then you grow some legs. Your tail won't shrink as the larva grows. The gills will shrink. You develop lungs. You're a big new now. Amphibian, amphibian. You're a gray crested newt. Now you walk on land or you swim in the water. You're a big newt now. Amphibian, oh amphibian. You're a great crested newt. Newts are cold-blooded amphibians. All amphibians are cold-blooded. What does cold-blooded mean? The temperature inside an amphibian changes to match the temperature outside. When the air is cold, amphibians are cold. When the air is hot, amphibians are hot. Let's start at the very beginning of the newt's life. Polly wanted to join us to learn about the newt, didn't you, Polly? Yes, I did. <laughs> so a newt will lay its eggs in water, like all amphibians do. And you can see here that this newt actually did lay its eggs in a group, but some newts will actually choose to lay one egg at a time, curled up, wrapped up in a leaf, to give it a little better chance of survival. Now, all newts will start off as an egg and turn into a larva. But some newts will actually go through this very interesting stage called the eft stage before they become adults. After the larvae become efts, they will actually live on land for five to seven years before returning to the water to become adults. Now, once the efts are ready to become adults, they'll actually return to the water and actually go through a second metamorphosis, actually growing fins on their tails so they can spend their adult life in the water. Newts actually belong to a larger group of amphibians called salamanders. So every newt is a salamander, but not every salamander is a newt. Now these salamanders belong to an even larger animal category called amphibians. Amphibians gets its name because it means double life, spending time on land and in the water. Newts are built for both land and water. They have short legs, which allow them to crawl upon the land, and they have that wonderful tail, which allows them to swim in the water. Now their skin is also quite interesting. Their skin will actually breathe the oxygen from the water or the land. So as young, they will use gills for breathing. They will develop lungs as they're older, but amphibians also have a special skin where in their pores, they can actually absorb oxygen from the air and the water. Like other amphibians with brightly colored skin, this warns predators of the poison that their skin releases, just like this red-spotted newt. Now we're going to learn about newts that are specific to Europe, one of which being the alpine newt, which lives in a good part of Europe, especially around those alpine regions. This map here shows exactly the region where that alpine newt lives. And as you can see, it really is through most of Europe. Now on to our featured newt, the great crested newt from Europe. The great crested newt, they like to live near ponds and streams. Adult newts will actually spend the entire summer and sometimes the entire year in the water. The male great crested newt has a crest upon its back. Now during breeding season, the crest will actually grow larger. The female does not have a crest. Another interesting difference between the two, and it's a little harder to see in this picture, but the male has a little bit of a silver stripe down the middle of his tail, whereas the female has an orange or yellow stripe at the bottom of her tail, but they both have a yellow, black spotted underbelly. The female great crested newt will lay between two and three eggs every day for five months 
often putting them in different parts on different leaves. Here's a great example to show actually how the leaf is kind of folded to protect that great crested new egg while it's in the water. It'll take about three weeks for a tadpole to actually form inside that new egg. So as you can see, that little yellow circle up here actually turns into a tadpole inside the egg. Then it will hatch and it feeds on algae and even other small tadpoles. The young great crested newt actually will grow these feathery light gills along the sides of its head to allow it to breathe underwater. As it develops lungs and goes to land, those feather gills will fall off. The adult crested newts will live on the land as adults, but they spend their time really close to the water. They will actually hibernate in the winter by burying themselves inside the mud. Here's a great picture of the giant crested newt larva. You can see those feathery gills and you can really see those spots on its tail. And that tail allows him to swim fast through the water. The giant crested newt is a nocturnal hunter and he loves eating bugs and bug larvae and even tadpoles. Here, you can see him eating worm. What's an amphibian? Amphibian has more skin, oh yeah! Amphibians are vertebrates, which means they have a backbone. Let's look at the x-ray of this amphibian. Look how cool you can see the backbone of the newt. And it's four toes in the front, it's five in the back. larva breathes with gills and they have feathers just like we do. My name is Heather which rhymes with feather. Amphibians can fit their skin! Whoa! Let's draw the great crested newt. All right, let's do it. So I have my blank notebook. And, and I have my animal notebook. Mm -hmm, with the Becca third grade curriculum. She's going to be she's writing some facts on this side and on her white page, she's going to draw the Great Crested Newt. Now I'm actually going to use a couple of different books here because I like how it shows the underside of the belly. That's such a significant thing about the Great Crested Newt. So I kind of want to draw from this angle, but this is a female and so she does not have the crest like the male does. So in, when I draw the crest, I'm actually going to use this picture to show um, the crest both on the back and on the tail and it has just like a little dip in between where there is no crest and also like this is what the what it normally will look like during mating mating season it actually will grow quite a bit bigger so let's start drawing our great crested newt all right i'm going to go ahead and start with my little newt's head up here and i'm just going to draw the flat portion of their back and then i'll go back through and draw dorsal crest. And then their tail is much wider than most newts are as it's made for swimming. So they have a much wider tail. It's almost like a tadpole tail. They kind of keep that throughout their whole lives. On the back here, they actually do have five toes. And since we're drawing kind of this belly, kind of facing us a little bit. Kind of come around here. Erase that part. Okay, and I'm going to draw now his little front. Now his front feet actually only have four toes. And the way this one's kind of positioned, he's almost kind of floating up a little bit here, which helps us that we can actually draw that underbelly there. Let me just erase the little line where his back was. So actually even this one, I think I actually want this one to go up. So then also his back legs are also going to be kind of one up, one down. So he's in that kind of a little bit of a goofy position. 
but this which is what I like because it showed the belly so one leg up and one leg down and the legs actually will have five toes not the four like in the front there and we'll kind of connect that wide paddle tail there so that's kind of like the basic outline of our new let's draw his eye they kind of have a circular eye with a circular center that's like um, black and then they have like a golden iris to their eye this one's made I may have made his snout a little bit too wide I think it needs to be a little bit more of a narrow snout there we go that looks much more like a newt. and then we'll just draw the outline of their little mouth and their little nostril there. So although they um, develop lungs as adults, they also can breathe through their skin as we learn, through their pores. So they can um, get oxygen from the water and the air through their skin, which is pretty cool. So now we have the basic outline drawn. So then I'm gonna use my other picture that I shared with you earlier to draw that dorsal crest. Now, if you see the dorsal crest is very small on his head, and then it grows a little bit bigger. It dips down by the base of his tail and then um, goes back up. But the dorsal crest on his back is a little more pointed or jagged than it is on his tail. So we're gonna do just a couple little ones up here. And then as we get closer to his back, it's a little bit more pronounced. Up and down just a little bit more. And then it kind of goes down, almost like a little valley. So like there's the mountain, there's the valley. At the base of the tail, it kind of goes down a little bit. And then the tail dorsal crest is a little more wavy than it is jagged. They also have a really cool the males do, I should say. They have a cool like silver stripe down the middle of their tail. Whereas the females don't have that. The females instead have an orange or yellow stripe down the bottom of their tail. So depending on if you're drawing a male or a female, it'll depend on where you draw that stripe. Okay, I think we've got basically drawn out. I think, you know what, I am gonna draw out the circles also that are gonna be on the belly. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a guideline here for the belly. In fact, the belly kind of goes down all the way to the tail here. And it does seem that actually at the tail, even on the underside, it's still that darker color. And also their little toes are, have um, yellow on them and some even have like kind of stripes or dots. It's really cool how each one is so different and that's one of the things about the Great Crested Newt is that each one has a different spot pattern. Like they have not noticed two that have the exact same spot pattern. So that's kind of cool how even in the animal world, God really makes each one unique. There are not two that are the same. And that really goes to show that he loves our differences. He loves our uniqueness. We just can't let that get to us or allow us to have disagreements with each other. We're all different and that's okay. That's beautiful that we are different. Makes it much more interesting. So here we have a few more of the spots. Now on their legs, I've noticed some are very much just dark on their legs. Others have the yellow on the underside of their legs a little bit too. And they also have a little bit of the yellow on the too and some have just straight up yellow fingers so again they're each different so however you color yours is unique and special in its own way I'm actually going to give my underside um, the spots with the yellow as well as their little feet just to, I think it looks cute that way too but like I said some of them will just have solid color legs but then all of them all the pictures we've seen the toes are most definitely either yellow or orange we've noticed they can either be both colors yellow or orange 
So it's kind of up to you again, how you want to, how you choose to color yours. So now we have our great crusted newt drawn. All right now we're ready to color. I'd actually have to start with my yellow. I always like to start with my lightest colors when, as I'm coloring. So I'm basically gonna color um, the underside of the belly, the underside of the legs, and all the toes are yellow. Um, but then the tail, actually, we are not doing any yellow on the tail. And you can choose different color shades of yellow as well. Right now that we have the yellow all colored, we've got underbelly and on the legs and on the toes. And I even did some around the eye to color the iris of that golden eye of the great crested newt. Since this is a male, I'm actually going to color this silver strip right here. If you are coloring a female, you would actually continue this yellow down at the base of the tail. Now they can be yellow, yellowish orange or orange as well. And actually the silver is very much the same color as my pencil lead, isn't it? <laughs> so then after we have the silver strip colored, the rest of the Great Crested Newt is a black to navy blue color. So depending on which color you have, but there are a lot of white warty spots all along his skin. And since that's very hard to color with pencils, unless you really took a lot of time, I'm actually gonna try something with some liquid watercolors to see about putting the white specks all over the skin. experiment a little bit here to try to get those white warded spots that are kind of all over the great crested newt and I'm going to take my the liquid white liquid watercolor and I'm just taking it on my paintbrush and kind of flicking it you could also do this with a toothbrush and flick the paint and you can kind of see how the white spots are all starting to appear so I'm going to kind of keep flicking it until I have about the amount that I want and then I'm actually going to wipe clean the areas where I don't really want spots. Because it's white, it just blends right into your white paper. I'm just gonna kind of blend through these and we'll see what happens when it dries. Great Crested Newt. Thanks for drawing with us, everyone. Now, here are some of the books we used in today's study. Life Cycles of the River. And this is actually where we saw the Great Crested Newt's Life Cycle, which was quite interesting. This book is by Sean Callery, and the consultant was David Burney. And we use Newts and Other Amphibians by Mary Scuttle. And this one also, I Want to Know About Amphibians by D. Phillips, as she also featured the Great Crested Newt. And we use Newts by Molly Colvin. And also we use Amphibiana Little Newts by Mesh Goldfish. And we also use Becoming a Newt by Grace Hannon. That's right, and this actually is part of the Kids series. I think you've heard us talk about that before, where they have a beautiful series with nice, beautiful photographs and very simple words. So I would highly recommend any of the Abdo Kids books. Well, thanks again for learning with us. Bye, Bye. everybody. Put your inside the amphibian eye. Temperature inside this amphibian. Just like.